Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Saturday Night Live at 5. I have a wonderful, wonderful guest today. Uh, she is a survivor and she is a thriver. And so before we start, you know, I always start with a scripture and or song, and sometimes I do both. I'm just going to start out saying a song that I love in praise and worship. And of course, I'm in the wonderful sanctuary of Mount Zion Assembly Healing Temple. We're not able to gather in mass, but we are able to praise God wherever we are. And this is a good thing about the omniscience of God. He is everywhere and he fills every place. And so I'm just going to start out by singing, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, help me sing it in your living room, wherever you are. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up. I magnify your name. Ooh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, help me sing the second verse. Oh, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up, I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, that's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Our Father and our God, we thank you for our hearts being full of you. Thank you for our minds, our souls, our bodies. Thank you for even during this pandemic season, we are still charged to lift up your name. We are still given the opportunity to praise you with our hearts, our minds, our soul. And today, Father, as we go further into this, this special broadcast, thank you for giving my friend, our friend, your daughter, a brand new heart, literally, figuratively, spiritually, and naturally so. We thank you as we go into this broadcast. Thank you for touching those that are watching us and those that are looking for hope. Let us give them hope today, oh God. Thank you for being such a friend to us when we didn't have anyone. Thank you for providing for us, God. We thank you for just being able to acknowledge your sweet name, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. God bless you, my friend. We are here today with uh, Sister, Mrs. I don't know what kind of title you want, honey, but we're gonna give you all your titles. Gospel this Sister. Man, I'm sorry. Just your gospel sister. Gospel sister. This is <laughs> WVON's gospel sister. All the way from Chicago, she is with us. Uh, her name is Pam Morris. I met her as Pam Morris. And the last several years, God has blessed her with a bow, Boaz. So her name is Pam Morris Walton. And she has a tremendous, tremendous testimony of God's healing power. Uh, God took her from having congestive heart, for, heart failure, so they thought, to needing a whole new heart. I mean, she has had a heart transplant, and that's something that some people do not recover from. Um, it, the procedures God has given mankind, uh, knowledge, thank God for doctors. We believe, in, uh, we believe in divine healing, but we also know that God gives doctors 
uh, the know-how and he gives, he downloads into people of medicine and all kinds of uh, uh, um, um, vocations. God blesses them. And so I just want to get right into your testimony. She has written a, a, a wonderful book called 57 Days. And this book, thank you for holding it up. That book chronicles the life that she had to live and what went through her mind during the time of going into the hospital and coming out of the hospital after being on the transplant, transplant list. That in itself was a miracle because there are many people waiting for years, for months for a heart. And so I just want you to go right into your testimony, starting from the day before you went into the hospital, we had dinner on Navy Pier and you told me that it wasn't until you told me then I really knew the gravity of the situation. Um, and you said, hey, tomorrow I go in the hospital. I'm like, hospital for what? Because she looked great, you guys, like she does now. So let's start from Riva's, which was the restaurant we went to. Let's start from that and go all the way. We, we don't have time for 57, the whole 57 days. But just, just, in about, just in about two minutes, tell us what led up to that decision to have a heart transplant. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. I call you my friend. I call you my pastoral friend. I call you Suffragan Bishop Monica Parche Price. It's so good to be with you. I needed a heart, not a stent or a pacemaker, but a heart or I was not going to live. I could die. I didn't know where the new heart was going to come from or when it was going to come. I had been all over the world, gospel artist, radio host, a wife, a mother, a friend, but in the midst of a busy life, the greatest battle of my life was upon me. It was the search for a new heart that would replace the existing heart that was in my body. That's the opening paragraph in the introduction. And then in chapter one, the first thing that I say in chapter one is, it's a day I will never forget. In February, 2016, I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. And the only thing I was thinking about was what does this mean? It was on my son's 45th birthday. And I got the surprise of my life. I was sitting in the emergency room on my way to West Virginia to see my ailing mother wow. who has dementia. Now it's advanced dementia. She's in hospice right now. And I was on my way to West Virginia to see her. I never made it, not that day or the next day. You came down from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to see me the, on July the 27th. And we went to eat. I ate everything on my plate. Yes, you did. And started to go in mine a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I did. That was probably my last great meal for a while, okay? Yeah. And then I shared with you, I needed a new heart or I wasn't going to live. Not a pacemaker, not a stint. So, my friend, I had been traveling. The doctor had said it is from travel a crowd of people wow. or from a baby. Wow. And that's what they narrowed it down to that I caught a virus. Doing, okay. So you had, you had caught, they, they said you caught a virus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. They said I had caught a virus and it disease. It was in my lungs. I had a cold. It was in my lungs and it traveled to my heart and diseased my heart. I went from congestive heart failure, February 2016, to advanced heart failure in July 2016. Wow. And I, I was on meds. They gave me meds and I was traveling back and forth to Elmhurst Hospital. And I want you to know, they said the meds did nothing for me. Oh, wow. So, so this was in February. My mom died in March. You came to the funeral. You and Frank came to the funeral, not knowing yes. that disease was really taking over your body at that time. I not was talking. on you meds so and wasn't talking. I was on meds. And can you imagine having congestive heart failure and just telling people about it? And I'm a broadcaster and I'm on the radio. Yeah. No. I just was going to take this. I was going to go through it until it worsened. Mm. I was there. I was well, there for you. 
for those of you who are not familiar with her, she's been on the air for 30 plus years. She's worked in the city. She brought Gospel Fest. Those of you who go to Gospel Fest in Chicago for 25, 30 years, this is the woman that made it happen. She worked with uh, Jesse Jackson. You worked with so many powerful people in the government at that time. And so you can imagine a public figure uh, seeing her slow down, not know why, and she never told anyone about it. She just kept kept going like a lot of us do. We feel a little something and we, we don't stop. We keep going because that's the press in us. That's what we were taught. You keep going, you keep going. So, so I, I, I didn't started. believe, mm -hmm. I didn't believe that this was happening to me and it was hard to accept this. Yeah. And if it was hard for me to accept it, how was I gonna share it? That's the truth. And then, and then I was newly people. married, I was newly married. That's so right. I'm going to uh, marry, I'm going to be married and go through something. And I actually dated for 16 months quietly and never had a cold. Mm. I remember because I said, when you, when you told me you were having, I'm like, no, you mean, you, you mean congestive heart failure. You're not getting a new heart. And, and knowing you're very, very, very animated and very emotional. And, and so I said, oh, Pam is exaggerating. She's not getting a new heart. I that was the only thing that was going to save my life was a new heart. And I asked the doctor, I looked at him, I looked at Dr. Jubanandan and Dr. Uriel and Dr. Kim and said, just a new heart, not a stint maker, not a, not a stint, not a pacemaker. And he looked at me and said, do you want to live? Wow. And I just, it just took me, I was like, wow. Well, you need a new heart. Well, I don't like needles. Well, you better get used to them because you're going to get a lot of them. And I had over a hundred of them. Wow. So let's fast forward from February mm -hmm. to July. Mm -hmm. August, you, you go into the hospital July 27th or 28th? 28th. Okay. July 28th at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. So what was it like? So to after you left me. Okay. I came home and tried to go to sleep. Okay. Finally, I went to sleep about one o'clock or so and woke up at 4.30 wow. a.m. So as you're laying on your bed at home for the last time before going to the hospital, what not even what knowing if I'm going to come back home, yeah. not even knowing if I was going to return home. Because at that time, you didn't know if they had a donor or not. You were just going, for those of you who are not familiar with heart, heart procedures, you have to be in the place to receive. Now, this is spiritual too. You have to be in the place to receive the heart. When they call for the heart, you can't be wandering around in another city. You have to be there because I don't know how many minutes it takes for them to make the transplant and the transfer into a new body. But, but you have to be there. Not so long. you were not long. Yeah. Yeah. I think with 13 minutes, it's got to be more than that. Because it's about four hours, I think. Four I think hours. it's about four hours. Quiet. But I was 27 days in the hospital. Bishop, Suffragan Bishop, before I got a new heart. And someone there not far from me had been there already 100 days. And when I left on the 57th day, they were still there. Okay, now that's a good segue into telling the people how they were there for 100 plus days, but you got your heart. I understand it was because of the procedure and the actual device that you were able to acquire because he was your doctor. Talk about that, in that, that device he invented. Dr. Juvenandan did uh, help to um, invent my new device, New Pulse CV Alpha. In the health beat, when someone has advanced heart failure, their heart is not functioning properly and can't circulate enough blood to meet the body's needs. Scientists in Chicago were testing a first of its kind pump to help the heart, one that doesn't require a large incision or a lengthy hospital stay. I'd love to get back fishing. It's my way of relaxing. It just totally it transforms you. Transformation is nothing new for 65-year-old Terry Feibelkorn and his wife Sandy. Right now, the seven-pound box attached to him is helping reboot his system. Ten years ago, Terry survived a heart transplant, but his arteries hardened. Last year, his transplanted heart started to fail. It creates kind of a shell 
and it won't expand like it's supposed to. Dr. Valuan Jivanandam and his team developed the cutting edge mechanical assist device for patients like Terry with advanced heart failure. It's called the New Pulse Intravascular Ventricular Assist System, or IVAS. It is a balloon that rests in the descending aorta, and it inflates when the heart relaxes, and it um, deflates when the heart pumps. While the heart is relaxed, the pump keeps working and adds a second pulse, improving circulation while giving the heart a rest. Unlike an LVAD or another assist device, the new pulse does not require a large incision through bones in the chest. It's basically an operation just on the skin. It's very similar to putting in a pacemaker, for instance. And then underneath there is where they have the wire. Terry's new pulse pump can be turned on and off. The batteries and software are inside the external drive. For now, he's gotten used to the pulsing sound of the machine, helping his damaged heart. Although the new Pulse IVAS was designed for long-term support, it is currently being tested in a clinical trial as a bridge to transplant for about 30 days or so. Doctors say it has been safely used for up to six and a half months. Eventually, researchers say it may be used to support and rest a heart for years until that organ is able to recover. And I, it's in the book. Okay. The picture is in the book. And I was wearing this, I qualified. Let me share this with you now. I was number four in the United States of America to qualify to have this device implanted into me after passing, that. after passing over a dozen tests. Wow. I qualified. No high blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, no cholesterol problems. I wasn't a smoker. I wasn't overweight. Um, um, no, um, what is that? The mammogram, fine. No, um, what is that? Uh, colonoscopy, okay, no polyps, everything, every test. Some names I cannot pronounce. Yes. I apologize yes. to I you. Yes. And um, I, I actually, uh, passed all of those tests and made it to the uh, candidate list, but had to remain in the hospital with that machine connected to okay. me okay. for 27 days. 27 days. Okay. 648 hours. What does the Almost a day short of four weeks. Okay, so what does the machine actually do for the heart while you're waiting for a new heart? Gives support of the heart and helps to take the pressure off of my heart until a new heart comes. It's in the book. I wrote about that in the book. Yes. It's a whole chapter. Yes, so those of you who are fascinating, those of you maybe you're having heart issues, you know someone who mm -hmm. has had uh, uh, situations like that, you can go to Amazon dot com and get 57 books and i, I will have no, 57 days uh, 57 days i'm sorry I'm <laughs> or barnes and noble book. or itunes <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking about the book 57 days i said 57 books so i want to quote a scripture um proverbs 4 and 23 says keep thy heart with all diligence mm. for out of it flow mm. or out of it are or out of it come the issues of life Oh my God. Keep Hallelujah. Your heart with all diligence. And all many diligence. years ago, many years ago, I did a series, Matters of the Heart for the Church. And that series lasted for a couple of months because not just dealing with heart issues, uh, physical, but spiritual heart issues. What happened while you were in the hospital those 57 days? What did God download into you? What did you feel in your spirit? We know that he blessed you with the new heart. You were on the transplant, but you were number four in the country. Yeah, and they're, and they're currently now, they're currently now over a hundred and some people and they can go home with that device. It's in the book. You've got to get the book. They can go yeah. home. What did I go through? If it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for my walk, my faith walk, I would not be healed today. If it wasn't for family and close family friends, cause I couldn't tell everybody. Yeah. I wouldn't do television. They came several times to take me and I rejected. I would not let them take me. So they went to the person next door. I wasn't ready. 
I wasn't ready. But my faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for Come on. and the evidence of things not seen. I lived my story in this book. I never stopped praying. I never stopped listening to good gospel music. 57 straight days. My husband brought the Kindle to the hospital. It's in the book. <laughs> I listened to it every day. I woke up out of surgery on August the 25th to beautiful music. The power of my faith is so important. Music it. is healing. Music is medicine. It music is. will heal you. They asked me when I went into the operating room that time. Now, of course, I went in for a uh, right heart catheterizations, biopsies, and all of that before the 25th of August. But on the 25th of August, when I knew that uh, what had happened that early morning, that time when she came in and said, no food, no drink, it's in the book. <laughs> she said, they said to me, and I mean, all day, all day, I had nothing. I was starving, but I couldn't eat anything. I just wanted a popsicle. I just wanted anything. And that night when I was prepped and it was about nine something or 10, close to 10, um, because I had talked to Dr. Horace Smith, my pastor, I had talked to my husband and uh, Pastor Frank, and I had talked to Pastor Belinda Thomas, our sister in love from Atlanta, Georgia, all of them, one, two, three, praying for me. Mm -hmm. I went into the operating room to every praise belongs to God. Come on. And that was the song I asked them by Hezekiah Walker into I Will Survive into Marvin Sepp's He Has His Hands on You. Wow. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper by Fred Hammond. I only heard and was singing the chorus of Every Praise Belongs to God, and I was out. Before they knocked you out before they knocked me out, the how anesthesia. Long, how long, now how long was that procedure? Taking your heart out and then trans, getting the new one and putting but, it in, how long was that procedure? Not just taking the heart out, but taking the new pulse Alved pump that had been inserted, it came up here and then it came out down here and then I'm carrying the six pound weight of the device on me for 27 days that is loud as a train and never wow. stopped. So I lived with that. But the operation, I'm told, took four and a half to five hours. And that's how, what how, I was told. How many, how many were a part of that team? Um, I'm told a dozen and a half. That's a lot of people in the operating room. That's a lot of people. That's what I was told. But Dr. Jubinandan, Dr. Val Jubinandan, Google him. Dr. Val Jubinandan, Dr. Near Ural, U-R-I-E-L. Some of the best surgeons in the world. I call him what they call Mother Teresa, a saint. Mm. Because he had done already over a thousand successful heart transplants. Really? Yes. So it's becoming more common. I remember when they first talked about it, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, 30, 40 mm -hmm. years ago, it was a lot, mm -hmm. it was a big thing to mm -hmm. take something mm -hmm. out of someone else and put it in someone else. When you woke up, how did you, did you feel different? Did your heart beat, did it take a while to get used to the rhythm? Um, did you feel like I'm not my same person because I got somebody else's heart beating in my chest? <laughs> I like that. Well, this is in the book. It's a picture of me, 15 tubes in me. And at the bottom, you see a picture of me where uh, I woke up in a rocking chair with tubes all over me. And in my mouth, there was uh, the tube that had burnt my lip. And I woke up and had them, I said, take it out, hike it out. And that's all I do remember. I remember seeing also, I heard the music, but I saw the doctors, two doctors, and the nurses that had been taking care of me for 27 days. They were standing there when I woke up. And I don't remember how long I was woke before I just went back out. 
How did you feel though? Like you got all these Absolutely. I was still kind of out of it, but I felt, I believe I felt good. I was so out of it, but I do remember later on that day or the next day when I woke up and saw the needle here with eight, seven different things connected to that one needle, seven different things. I don't mean, then, I don't mean the then, mechanics of it. I mean, like, let's, let's fast forward a few days later when you realize I have somebody else's heart in me. After all the tubes are taken out and after you are kind of living separately from all of that, I don't know how many, you can go through your, your med regimen if you want to now, but how did you, did you feel like I have somebody else's heart in me? Wow. I, I felt good. Okay. I felt good. I felt blessed. I felt like um, God chose me mm -hmm. to give me a second chance at life. My life wasn't finished. My life wasn't finished. I felt good. But because I had so many things connected to me, like the tubes and the things and the thing, I couldn't do any movements or anything actually. Okay. So, so I'm feeling the, yeah, I'm feeling the attachments mm. more so than the fact that, uh, because this is all covered and bandaged, even though there's pictures of me later in the, in the book <laughs> that shows the incision. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But I feel the way I felt that day, tremendously, remarkably blessed that God thought enough of me to make me one of his miracles. What you preach, what you teach, what you live, I am. I am. You are a miracle. Yes, I am. There are some people now, as, as, as um, common as this procedure is, there are some people who do not make it. They don't, their body rejects it for some reason. And so I don't want people to think, well, you know, that procedure has been, um, uh, they, you know, they've gotten all the kinks out. No, any procedure, anytime you go, as they say, under the knife, anytime you go under anesthesia, anytime, especially during uh, a donor uh, trans, uh, you're getting transplants, anything could happen. An anything could happen. Infection could have set up, infection could have. A lot of I, I, had, I had no infection, uh, mm -hmm. my friend, Pastor Monica. I had no infection and no rejection. However, it was a strange object that was in my body. Yeah. And I was on lots of meds, actually 38 meds, and one med is seven pills. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you went from how many pills to now? Four years later. Went from 38 meds to eight meds a day. And one med is seven pills still. Wow. Three times a day? Mm -hmm. Twice. 12 yeah. hours. I'm, I, am, um, I do it morning and night. But wow. when I was at the hospital, it was like every three hours. But God. Now, as we go, through, as we, we're going through this pandemic season. Mm -hmm. And I want to get to what happened when you first met your donor's family. As we're going through this pandemic season, mm -hmm. what type of precautions are you taking? Because remember, now, those of you who, of course, you don't know her, but uh, those of you who do know her, remember when Pam was wearing masks everywhere? This was four years ago. She, four you years ago. Revelation. I was wearing a mask. Oh, I like your mask. That's nice. I want one. I want one. <laughs> oh, I was wearing a mask. I was wearing a mask for three months. Yeah, you were wearing masks and you were onto something because now, look, everybody's got to wear a mask thing. Mask everybody. Mask everybody. Mask help. They kept me from um, the, well, they said to me from getting infected or disease or anything from mm -hmm. anybody. Now that was four years ago. And I still have those masks. I went on Amazon.com in the hospital and ordered me some diva masks. <laughs> As I didn't like the hospital mask. Look, 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 people laughed at Michael Jackson, but he was on to something. He wore a mask everywhere he went. He, he was did. on to something. He did. So that's and why masks, masks saves lives. Yeah. I what am I doing right now? I'm following the CDC requirements to the T. 
Yes. I wash my hands often. I carry hand sanitizer with me. It's in the car. I have wipes. Mm -hmm. I not only wear the mask, but I also keep my distance from other people. That is important. That save, saves lives. And but that's this mask, you must wear a mask. And that's difficult for, for church yes. people because our, in our culture, we're, we're very relational people. We like to touch, feel, we like to hug. And so now, yes. you know, I have- I'm bumping, to, now I'm bumping and I'm fist yeah, bumping, because we, yeah. we, can't, we can't, and I'm a hugger. Yeah. I am a hugger. Yeah, me too. I like to hug people and actually hold on to them and just let them know I care about you. Yeah. I'm thinking of you, yeah. but uh, um, you, can't, you can't do that now. You can't do that. Yeah, I have a bad habit of hugging off the shoulder long. I feel like if I'm not in your mouth, I'm not in your way. We both have on masks. Lord, but you know what? I did that with Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith said, I'm going to break all the rules. And we just grabbed each other and hugged. <laughs> he was so there for me, you know. Oh, he talk and Lady about, Susan. Talk about what role that the church played in your life, not just your faith. And those are for, that's for someone out there who, who has lost their faith along the way. Uh, you know, you hear a lot about church hurt now, and I always tell them, stand in line. Uh, you're right behind me. We've experienced some things. But that's why our relationship with God has to supersede what the church has done, what you've heard, what you felt. Mm -hmm. Your relationship with God, child of God out there, your relationship with God is going to get you through, especially during this season. It's not about church people. It's not about the building. But talk about your relationship with God, Pam. How did that that's, strengthen? That's so easy. And that's so quick. And, you know, I don't talk, you know, short. I talk long. <laughs> As a communicator, I just talk. It was my personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I have one. I had one. I still have one. Good. And I talk to him. I read the word of God. I listen to good music. I listen to the gospel music that was written by great people that have Bible scripture titles. Mm. And that blessed me. That kept me. That gave me the strength it's to scripture. make it through. And then a great husband who's loving and caring and never missed a day and hospital food. Now, let me just share with you now. I'm just going to talk to you about Pam. <laughs> I'm not a lover of hospital food. And you're talking you about did. short of two months, a few days short of two months, and I'm going to eat that food? No. I ate popsicles, cereal, bananas, bananas, applesauce, and fruit cocktail. I had to have my meals. Yeah, but um, I know somebody snuck in some greens and some chicken and something in there. But never mind, you can't say that we're on the air. Never mind. Never mind. Greens are good for you, though. Greens are good for you as long as you're just a little. Them, just as long I had, as I had a couple of people to cook for me and good. Miller's pub and and my husband. I think I ate a whole watermelon. He brought me some watermelon and I it was so good. I said, please bring me some more. So he left and went home and brought me some more. And of course, you know, I spent the whole month of August in the hospital. I went from summer into fall. Mm -hmm. I got out of the hospital on September the 22nd, which was the first day of fall. I spent four days of July, that summer, the entire month of August, and 22 days of September in the hospital. So the whole time you were in the hospital was how long? The whole entire time you were in the hospital? How many days was that? 57. 57. Hence the title of the book, 57. What was it like when you were in ICU and you, you opened your eyes and you saw uh, one of the armor bearers come and wait on you and serve you and be a part of one of the armor bearers of um, Dr. Smith, one of our own, come and help you out? I think that wasn't the best day for me when uh, Nurse Tiffany came to assist me. I don't think I was, um, not every day was I a good person. It's in the book. And that might have been one of the days when I <laughs> smiled when I saw her face because she knew me. Mm -hmm. I want to say that she changed the dressing on me. Okay. And she spoke to me with encouraging words and said, 
you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And I asked her if she would please come back again. Please mm -hmm. come back. She was wonderful. Tiffany, I love you with all my heart. Thank literally. you. <laughs> yes, literally my heart. And then I want to tell you something about page 51 okay. in the book. Pastor, uh, my friend, Pastor Monica, on page 51 in the book, I'm not good with the rolling veins that kept rolling that Sunday late afternoon. So every time I was stuck by the nurse, Jason, I hollered, mm, I cried, mm. and then I screamed. Mm, and then mm. I told him, I give up, stop. And that was the day when I had reached my breaking point. I'd had enough and I was ready to give up. Mm. I was ready to give up. The heart hadn't come. I was ready to give up. And my husband sent everyone out the room. And well, it's in the book. I won't tell you what he did. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what he did. You got to read it. It's in the book. But he did. He sent everybody out the room because I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take them shooting those needles up me and the veins, my veins were rolling and they just could not look it. They couldn't get it. And it just, it was so painful. It was so painful. And I didn't care anymore at that moment. I couldn't take the pain. Those were the blink days that I mentioned in chapter one, mm -hmm. page 51 and 52. You said April, 2016, the first patient received that device. Yes. And then here you are, July 28th, the fourth person being blessed with the new pulse CV IVAS. And, and the first black woman of mm. color, the first one, the first woman. It was three men before me. And one of those men I'm told had flew into Chicago because of the doctors, mm -hmm. Jubinandan mm -hmm. and Dr. Uriel, to have them to do their operation. And he, I heard he got his heart in five days, the first one. That's what I heard. I, I didn't write about it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I didn't know that for sure. Well, this is but, your story. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about my story here. That's right. But being number four and qualifying mm -hmm. to have that device to lessen it. I wrote about it. I wrote about it here. To lessen the pressure on a diseased heart to keep me living. I didn't have to make it through surgery. Some people don't make it. That's what I'm saying. People don't make it. So yeah. doctor, you said doctor- Some don't Juvenan, get the heart. Right. Some don't get the heart. Dr. Juvenan says, when you're in heart failure, I love this mm -hmm. quote. When you're mm -hmm. in heart failure, the heart is not generating enough power into yes. circulation. So yes. you need to increase power. Now, you know, spiritually, I took- Page 23. Page 23. I, I took off when I read that. Yes. So as we talk about the physical yes. heart, and, and we, I, I don't know, Pam, we may have to come back on this one, but I may have to interview again. Now, those of you out there know I'm good for part two and three and four, because sometimes <laughs> everything cannot encapsulate into one, one session. And when you talk about the power of the heart, and the Bible says, I, we, 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 we talk about Sometimes when people want to make a decision, they say things like, follow your heart, and I get it. I was talking to someone not too long ago about a decision I was wrestling with, and they said, follow your heart. I said, I can't do it, because the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. Who mm -hmm. can know it? So the heart is wicked. God has to purify us with his word. He has to wash us with his word. And then our spirit man we should be governed by our spirit man because God gives us the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Yes, he does. Govern our ways. Mm -hmm. So how has this experience, and I want you all right now, um, it's going to be on the screen, 57 days, go get that from Amazon, iTunes. What other outlets are, do you have? iTunes, Bar Barnes and Noble, and uh, Pastor uh, Monica, it will be an ebook uh, okay. shortly. Perfect. It will be an ebook shortly. I'm um, Christian Fine. Christian Faith Publishing will be sending out that press release soon. I want you to get that book, not just for her story, but does the, does the essence of, of what it means to survive and thrive. Many people last through 
uh, um, transplants, they last mm -hmm. through it, but they don't mm -hmm. thrive after that. They're still governed by being at home. They can't yeah. leave. They're still attached to things. This woman of God has survived, yeah, has traveled out of the country since this. She has traveled. You said you've been to uh, Italy how many times because of the Gospel Fest? This was over the years. 27 times? 20 eight times to what Europe. Think? I think it's 28, 28 or 27 in here. I think it's 27 or 28, all expenses paid. So 20 taking gospel times, music. 27 times she's been to Europe and this was years ago. And look how God has brought her to the place of recovery. This is what I want to get to. You are not in a situation where God cannot pull you out of what you're in. You can recover and you don't have to just, oh, I'm surviving. You can thrive. The Holy Ghost doesn't talk about surviving. He says we are more than conquerors. Yes, we he are. He loved us. So the Holy yes, Ghost, so what was it like? Now you've come through, you've come through this transition. You got a new heart. No tubes are in you. You're walking out the door. You're going home. What was it? How long was that from that time to the time you met your donor's family? Take us through wow. that. Wow. <laughs> I wrote a letter. Wow. You got me on that one. <laughs> you got me on that one. I was going to tell you why I wrote the book, but you got me on this one. Um, wow. Uh, I wrote a letter uh, to the gift of hope. Um, wow. And uh, it was at least a year and maybe a month. And I was at an event. I was at an event at the Hyatt Regency. And I was at the table, I want to believe, with the Gift of Hope family. And Miriam Shulks looked at me and said, I believe the family's ready to meet you. Mm. And I went, oh my God, I mean, I just almost lost it. And I said, what? She said, yes, Mario Cousins. Uh, you have Mario Cousins' heart. Oh my God. Of course, I came home and Googled. I wanted to know. And um, um, then sooner, it was a few days after that, that they had arranged for us to come to Alataska, Illinois, to meet the family. Mario Cousins Jr. Organ saved six lives. Wow. I got the heart. Mm. Saved six lives. I received the heart. One by one, each family went in. Uh, the lung, left lung, right lung, the kidney. Um, um, I, I'm sorry, I can't think of all That's the organs okay. at this it's moment. It. And then it. I was the last one to go in. And when I went in, when I went in the room, we hugged, we cried. We hugged, we cried. Mm. She would not let go of me. The mom. And then the mom mm. came up. And then they handed me the stethoscope. 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 Yeah. And she listened to her son's heart beat in me and would not let me go. Mm. That was the first day. Then we all gathered in that day. Her son's organs went into two African-Americans, two Hispanics, and one Caucasian. Mm. Now, what is it about Mario Cousins? Who is he? Because you said you Googled him. He was a young man that was sitting on his parents or grandmother's porch that was shot one morning, one Sunday morning. Oh, wow. How old was he? 20. Young heart. God is good. And by the way, you got to read the book because <laughs> that wasn't the first heart. I had a false alarm. Did I have more than one? Ooh. But in the book, 57 that's, the, that's the right heart that I got, the right heart that I got. And then that next day, let me speed up to that next day. Mm -hmm. We all came together to worship mm -hmm. at the Apostolic Faith Church, Dr. Horace Smith Astor, mm -hmm. 38th in Indiana. 
and yeah. all of the TV cameras were there. Mm-hmm. It was unbelievably wonderful because it was triumph and victory. It was her there because she, her son's heart and her and and Mario's heart, Mario mm-hmm. the father had saved all of us. We were all there and we're all doing well with no rejection and no infection. That's incredible. <clears throat> That's incredible. The power- and one of the donors live were in your city. I mean, one of the recipients live in your city. Oh, wow. They're Caucasian. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in your chapter five, you deal with gospel music as medicine. Woohoo! And so gospel music has taken you literally all over the world. Uh, Pam has been a radio announcer for 40 plus years, I want to say. Yes. 40 plus years. Uh, started out in LA. She's from Virginia. You read her book, you have to get 57 days. Started out in West Virginia, as she always says, as a country girl who made it. And so God has taken her from, from West Virginia. She lived out in LA for many years. That's when I met you. Many, That's many, when you met me? I met you but many, many can, years ago. Let me interrupt you for one moment. Back in the I'm 80s. From, <laughs> I'm from West Virginia. Yes. People meet me and they say, she can't be for real. Nobody acts like that. But I do. How do you and act it's in the book. I act this way all the time. I drink peppermint tea, ginger tea, and this is me. This is the real Pam Morris. People in people West all Virginia tonight. don't drink tea. <laughs> yeah, they do. And we sing, we speak to each other. Uh-huh. Uh, we're kind. Mm-hmm. We we are loving. And um my Aunt Mabel told me, she's in the book too. My Aunt Mabel told me, when you get on the elevator, speak to people. Don't sit up, stand up there and don't speak. Speak to people. So I speak to people mm-hmm. on the elevator and off the elevator. They said, I say hello. And somebody said to me, what's, I said, good morning. They said, what's good about it? Mm, that's your opportunity. But that's, the way, but that's the way I was raised. Yeah. So I'm speaking from up on the hill in West Virginia, Red Hill. Mm. I was raised, this is how I am. I wake up thanking God. Now I double thank him because mm. he gave me another chance at life. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Your art- but gospel music, gospel music, mm-hmm. that's the greatest art form in the world. Amen. Gospel music, it's at weddings, national, international. It's in theaters, it's in the park, it's in the church. Gospel music. You just got through singing when you opened this program, a gospel song. Yeah, yeah. And that's literally your heartbeat. Gospel music is your heartbeat. Yes, it is. What would you encourage, how would you encourage people who are going through something similar to you who have not received uh, a transplant, but they're waiting? What would you do to encourage them? They've been waiting longer than 57 days, hundreds of days. And they're discouraged and they want to say, just let me die. Don't give up. Live. Don't give up. If it happened for me, it can happen for you. You know why I wrote 57 Days? It's on page six. I wrote it for persons that know someone or personally Mm -hmm. have had a medical challenge or a life-threatening situation with their heart. Death is Mm non-negotiable. I could have died but God, nobody else but him. You want to know if he's real or not? Look at me. It wasn't your time. (laughs) It wasn't my time, but don't give up. You need a heart? Read my book. Just keep reading it. Just read it over and over again. Read it. It will help you because writing my story, I didn't give up. I started to just say, oh, no, forget it. But my girlfriend next door, Pat, gave me a journal. So I wrote in it. And then when I had people like you and others that would come and visit me, because everybody couldn't come see me. No, they couldn't. Everybody couldn't come see me. Plus, I wasn't going to tell everybody where I was behind the curtain at the University of Chicago Medicine for 57 days. When you came to visit me several times, you came from behind the curtain, and I didn't even know you were coming. You surprised me. But I sat up there with my pearls on. Same pearls, everybody. Set up there. (laughs) Yes, you did. In my outfit, everybody on the floor was in a smock. They were just in a different room. And I was living there. 
the nurses, the doctors, they became my family. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I, I, I think I would have lost my mind if I would have been in a gown every day. It's important for us to change our cosmetics often for us to feel, feel better. My mother used to say, better. if you dress better, you feel better. Now, and you know your mama better. was right. Now, yes. you know your mama was right because your mama was sharp every time from the <laughs> hat to the toe. I'm looking at her like, oh, I like that hat. Oh, look at that outfit. And then down on there, looking at her shoes, I go like, she didn't miss a beat. And your often, mama. sometimes, unfortunately, in this society, people judge you by how you're dressed, though. Some of us who have gone into stores, if we didn't look the part or dress the part, they followed us through the store. That's a whole nother, that's another show. Oprah would say that. But, but first impressions are lasting impressions. Absolutely. I get up every morning and get dressed. You know that. Because I send you an email or a not that's an email, I send, you, I send you a message or a video mm -hmm. and I say, good morning. You're like, mm -hmm. I miss it. But <laughs> it makes me feel better. And, again, and we I feel the makes us feel better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other do what makes us feel better. So your chapter seven is called All in the Family. Wow. And so you 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 write that things life is very important. The sunbeams are cutting through my window. You wake up and you see the rays of the Son of God. <laughs> what does that make you feel? You said I told Frank to expect my call in for me. After all the messages we agree for everyone, I'm away under doctor's care. Thank you for your prayers, right? Well, right. guess what? I'm still away. I'm still away. Yeah, that's right. That's what I did. That's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. And I felt good. I felt good. I wanted to tell people. I wanted to tell people I was in the hospital, but I was around the corner, up the street, under doctor's care. Figure that out. Mm. Don't let me tell you. Let me tell you when I get ready. What are, the, what, are the, what are the psychological, we know about the physical aspects and the ramifications of this. What was the psychological ramification or the bearing that took place in your mind of receiving a foreign object into your body? That I wanted to connect to my body because I believe this is the right heart for me. And I wanted to connect and God would let, I, I live right. I treat people right. I love the Lord. I serve him. I give, I share. Why wouldn't God take care of me? Mm -hmm. Why? Why wouldn't he? I don't, I would not question him. And I think that's why I'm here today. Is there any my family? My family came, my mm -hmm. family, my aunt Norma, she could have flew here. She had her daughter mm -hmm. to come there to Washington, D.C. and drive her to Chicago to see me in person at the hospital and pray for me. Wow. My girlfriend, who I sung at her wedding, I didn't remember that, but she let me know I did, 40 years ago, maybe wow. 41 or two or three or four years ago, maybe 44 years ago now, she, her sister, her husband, their husbands flew from Los Angeles, California to the hospital to see me and pray for me. I didn't even know they were coming. Mm. Family, family, friends. Well, this Pastor is Dorsey, you may have heard that name before. Pastor Dorsey, Pastor Joseph Dorsey out of Los Angeles. His, whole, his family came to visit me and pray with me. Well, that well, just goes to show you when you sow seeds, good seeds, on good ground, it comes up, and you're a recipient sometimes of the very seeds that you've sown. You're a recipient of all the goodness that you have spread over the years. When you, as you lived with this new heart, mm -hmm. many months later, did you notice a different in change of appetite? Did you find out from his mom, what are his favorite things to eat? Because all of a sudden, I want to eat oranges all the time. Did you notice that he liked oranges or watermelon or anything? Because that's what a lot of people want to know. With somebody else's heart, do you take on their tendencies? Do you take on their proclivities? Do you take on their appetite? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's difficult for me to pass five guys. 
He loved cheeseburgers. I can't get enough of them. He <laughs> loved cereal. I eat cereal for breakfast or lunch and lunch and dinner. He loved fruit. Now, I enjoy fruit, but now I can't eat enough fruit. I can eat a can of peaches in one serving. I ha and I ask her, I ask Emma, I say, Emma, tell me. She said, that's Mario. That's incredible. I have his heart. So the, the heart and the brain. I remember you and I talking about that a couple years ago, the connectivity between the brain and the heart things you used to didn't think about, now you think about. So now we are really intricately connected. We're connected. I can't eat grapefruits anymore. I can't have pomegranates anymore. I must eat much fish and fowl because of this object, which is a heart mm -hmm. that is in my body. And those that have had heart transplants would know what I'm talking about. It's in the book. I wrote about it. But you have to be careful with your diet. You must not eat a lot of stuff that's not good for you. Well, that's not or, right. or it will mess with your heart. Okay. It will oh, mess wow. with your heart and that will give you rejection. Okay. So you said you can't eat grapefruit. Is that because the grapefruit and the meds don't mix or grapefruit and heart just don't mix? Grapefruit and heart doesn't mix. Is that right? And Is because of the acid? The acid. I can't drink Mountain Dew. I can drink 7-Up and Sprite, but I can't drink Mountain Dew. Is that because of the caffeine? Because they're both carbonated drinks, so. I just never looked it up. I just obeyed okay. my transplant coordinator when they met with me okay. and made me promise them that I would follow the orders so that I would have no rejection and no infection. I was going to make it. Mm -hmm. I strive to do what they said. Mm -hmm. And so far, so good. We're, we're, we're running out of time. But I, okay. I need another part two. Would you do another part two with me? I will. Please. You're so sweet. Because You're there's so other sweet. things I wanted to deal with. Yeah, we're running out of time. There's other things I want to deal with. And then we're going to do, a, I, I just want you to come to Milwaukee and do a book oh. signing. Um, oh, we understand thank you. COVID season, um, things you. have to be done a certain kind of way. Um, but I think it's, 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 it's necessary. Thank and you. You're necessary. I love you for this. You are necessary. I love you for this. I love you for this because you didn't have to take time out to hear my story. And I appreciate you. You didn't have to get in your car and drive me and drive down to Milwaukee a number of times to pray for me. But you did it and you did it in person. Yes. Yes. That was the last meal I ate before I went in the hospital when we went to Rivas at mm -hmm. Navy Pier, the last meal I ate before I went into the hospital. 57, yeah. For 57 days. And you wrote, yeah. you wrote this book, I'm gonna close now, but you wrote okay. this book, not only out of your experience, but out of the journals. And this is to increase, those, this is to encourage anyone who runs, wants to write a book. Mm -hmm. Start journaling your, your, your journey. Journal your journey. Mm -hmm. And start writing things down as things come to your spirit, as things come to your mind. Yeah. Uh, just about what God is going to do and see yourself at the finish line. How is this book going to impact not just my community, but how is this book going to impact the world? When you're writing, how, who is this going to impact? Because someone's watching this saying, well, I, you know, I, don't, I haven't had a 57-day experience. I have mm -hmm. a decent heart. Why should mm -hmm. I buy this book? You should buy this book because this is about perseverance, whether you're trying to get a job, whether you want a closer relationship with God, this is about perseverance. This is about stick to -itiveness. This yes, is yes. about one's faith. So you don't have to have a transplant to buy this book. No, this you is don't. about the faith <laughs> of a woman. This is about a faith of a community, the faith of a family that held Pam Morris Walton together. And we can right. all need more faith. Your we all do. Mary Mary saying, I need a little more faith. I oh, God, I love Jesus. him. I love him. And I want to say this before we hang up, on pay, or before we end. On page six, I said in the third paragraph, I think if life wanted to mess with me, it mm -hmm. could have come up with a better way than 
taking my heart. You have the heart that you were born with. You have the heart in you that you were born with. I have Mario's heart. Wow, I have that highlighted. I was gonna deal with that too. Thank you for saying that. I have it highlighted because that was a powerful statement. Why did life mess with me? And this is how a lot of us feel right now. I say us because I can relate to so many things that people are going through now. We're not sure what's going to come on the other side of this pandemic. We're not sure how the church is going to respond. We're not sure how we're even going to meet together. But, but, but just know that life is not messing with you. God is proving his love for you. He's proving his spirit through you. He's proving his tender care. Jehovah Rapha is our provider. He's our healer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's, He's our, our healer. Jehovah Rapha healed you. And you are healed and recovered. I think I am going to do a part two because there's other parts of this book. I want to entice people to go buy this book between now and next Saturday. I want those of you who have read this book to type in the questions, ask some questions. So you have from now until next week. I'm going to say now to next Friday. Those of you from Mount Zion, if you just go online, uh, sometime Amazon will put samples out. So, so because mine hasn't come in yet in that way. I have the email form, but I want you to go buy this book. It's worth it. She's our sister in Christ, and we have to support each other. And so we're going to continue to support you. Uh, just, it just, just take us out with a prayer. Would that be okay for you to just pray us out, First Lady? <laughs> No, you didn't do it. No, you didn't do it. No, you did, did it. not. Did it. You did. did not do that. Tell me you didn't do that. Tell me that you did not do that. You pray <laughs> Lord, we come to you. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, and to give you and expected in Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call upon him, and I will answer thee. And in the Bible, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And Lord, right now we need healing. Yes, you God. have healed me. You have been good to me. The Bible tells us to pray continually. We know that we are fearlessly and wonderfully made. We praise your name. We thank you, Lord. We exalt you. We lift you up. We praise your holy name. We know that you are a sovereign God. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We thank you for tuning in to this edition of Saturday Night Live at 5. I also want to thank uh, Minister Sherlyn Brown and her staff and many people who pitched in at the last minute. Uh, we, God, was, God was good to us and it gave us just a wonderful, uh, some, we got over a thousand boxes of food. And so wow. uh, they, they delivered them. Uh, rather, they came to the school and people are able to pick up food and just want to thank them for just being able to move at the last minute. It was a last minute thing, but thank God, how many know that God will dump a blessing sometimes yes, in your lap at a last meeting that will bless other people. And Miss Pam Morris Walton, you have been a blessing to us. We thank you so much for sharing your story and sharing your journey of 57 days with us. Again, I encourage you all to go out and get 57 days. It's online at amazon.com. It's at iTunes. You can go to Barnes and Noble and very soon it will be an ebook. But until then, we want you to go and get this book in the name of Jesus. We thank God for what God is doing. We thank God that we are also partnering with Aversity, which is an organ, door, which is an organ uh, um, organization. And oh, we partner with them. They, we, they have come here to, uh, uh, we have blood drives and things of that nature. And we are part of that as well. We are encouraging uh, specifically African-Americans to, to be donors. I, I'm a donor on my license. Um, you I know, you, you need to be there because you don't know, case in point. You are helping right. someone to live. That's right. All Give right. Give somebody hope. 
Give them hope. Give somebody. That's a great way to end this broadcast. Give someone. Give someone hope. We encourage you to keep joining in Saturday night live at 5, every Saturday at 5 p.m. We have been chronicling uh, the, our founders, Bishop Parche and, and Mother Parche. We have been showing old videos. This is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we thought it would be best and be great to honor our founders. So last Wednesday night, uh, Word for the World at 7 p.m., we showed Bishop Parche an old tape, I believe it was 2009, 2008, uh, where we taught a Bible class and where we had church. You saw the saints shouting and rejoicing. So uh, I think we have one more for that, but we, if this is our Wednesday. So keep, keep us in prayer. We thank you so much for being a part of this Saturday Night Live at 5. I'm your host, Suffolk and Bishop Parche Price, and this is Mount Zion Assembly Healing Temple. God bless you. Thank you.